Vicki Goodwin says February 4th, 2021 is the day her world changed forever. It was a Thursday morning. I got up, took my dog for a walk. Remember walking in, then I walked down the hall to Jonathan's room and opened the door and he wasn't in his bed. And I walked into his room and, um, and then I, I found him. Jonathan Goodwin was just 15. Jonathan was incredibly bright, uh, funny, quirky, a wonderful friend. Uh, he was a twin. Um, he and his brother were really close. But for reasons he kept hidden, Jonathan took his own life. His mom says nobody knows why. You know, it doesn't matter how it happens. It doesn't matter um, if there were signs or if there weren't signs. It's just, you know, losing a child is as bad as every parent thinks it would be. In the U.S., the rate of young people dying by suicide increased nearly 60 percent between 2007 and 2018. Researchers say trends are especially alarming among black youth. In Goodwin's home state of Colorado, suicide is the number one cause of death for kids and young adults. But then COVID-19 turned life upside down. Teens already under the usual adolescent pressures of life, school, and social media are now, experts say, dealing with a year and a half of chronic pandemic stress. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen this number of children who need help and mental health services, and I've never seen this many kids be in acute crisis. It's gotten so bad that in 2021, for the first time in its history, Children's Hospital Colorado declared a state of emergency for youth mental health. We're seeing lots of kids come in with depression and anxiety, really nervous about starting the school year. So a real sense of hopelessness and not knowing how to solve their problems other than I just got to get out of this. Experts say the reasons behind the nationwide jump in teen suicide over the last decade are varied and hard to pin down. Social media, money or family problems, even fear of school shootings and worry about climate change. It can all add up. Making it worse, says psychologist Jenna Glover, is a shortage of professional help. There are not enough mental health services. Catching kids early on, screening them in pediatrician offices, screening them at school, and when they have just the beginnings of symptoms, getting them into preventative programs and doing immediate intervention so they don't show up at the emergency department. We just need more of that. Short of professional help, experts say one of the most effective ways to prevent suicide is to talk about it. It is the most common myth that asking about suicide will increase it. Um, what we know is asking about suicide will absolutely decrease the risk of it and it keeps your kids safe. If teens are reluctant to talk to adults, the hope is they'll talk to other teens. I'm actually the social media manager. Marin McKinney is a teen ambassador for a suicide prevention group called Robbie's Hope, giving advice to other kids. It's okay to not be okay and a lot of us, we are, we do go through bad days and tough situations, but there's always someone out there that wants to listen and talk to you. And adults, too. I would tell a parent to not overreact or overcomplicate the situation. Kari Eckert and her husband Jason started Robbie's Hope after losing their son in 2018. So this is the office of Robbie's Hope. Their Golden Colorado home is now headquarters for an all-out effort to get kids and adults help to prevent suicide. Everything from producing free guides on how to talk about it. Just really, really good tips. And this comes from, it's written by teens. To lobbying state lawmakers for new laws. Several states, including Colorado, now allow teens to miss school to take a mental health day. Kids bring this to the table and say, it's important to me. I shouldn't have to lie about why I can't be in school today. We aren't just about saying that teen suicide is a problem. We want to bring resources to this. What's the ultimate goal? We want to reduce teen suicide rates by 50% by 2028. That's a big goal. He's been a fantastic therapy dog. For now, Vicki Goodwin is taking things day by day. I guess focusing on something positive, focusing on the gift that we have, the gift that we had with him, makes the hard days a lot easier. Hoping that being open about her tragedy helps other parents to not feel so alone. Secrets are toxic. And we felt that the only way that we could make losing a child worse is by um, passing that burden on to our other children and, and ourselves. And being open and choosing to talk about it has been, I think, good for 
all of us. We just want to help one family. Clayton Sandell, Newsy, Denver.